Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Light Dynamics 2 is the name of the course. Uh, in this course, we are studying uh, motion of flying objects in air. <coughs> the motion that uh, will uh, study is about the equilibrium conditions. So let us say we assume that uh, the object that we are looking at, looking at is a flying steady equilibrium motion. So there is a equilibrium state let us say this object is flying Then what we want to look at is how uh, what happens to this motion when a craft or any, any flying object is disturbed from this equilibrium state. So what we actually interested in looking at is the perturbed motion of a flying object from a steady uh, equilibrium flying condition and also the this perturbed motion is introduced uh, because of the unsteadiness in wind, several wind conditions for example uh, gust or, uh, uh, or maybe uh, a different wind condition which is uh, 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 suddenly encountered. There are two things one is uh, to look at uh, the small motion around the equilibrium state. So uh, this motion is mainly caused by small disturbances and the other one is related to large motion. So this is small motion around the equilibrium state and large motion which requires the control effort. Some of the uh, examples of uh, no, uh, flying objects are uh, birds, insects, uh, these are living examples and uh, there are examples which are man made machines. So in this category you will have several types of objects gliders spacecraft missiles aircraft and so on okay in this uh, course uh, we look mainly at uh, the class of objects you know, which are using uh, its interaction with uh, air to produce forces and moments to sustain its motion through air. 
so we basically are looking at atmospheric flight and majority of this course will be about aircraft so we are basically looking at aircraft atmospheric flight dynamics okay so an aircraft we know that is uses a is a aerodynamic shape to create forces and moments which sustain the motion of aircraft in air and uh, what we want to look at is how the sustained motion you know, which is uh, for example you can talk about a level flying condition where aircraft engine produces thrust which gives it a forward motion to overcome no and and because of the aerodynamic shape of the aircraft you have lift produced which balances the weight so this is a one such flying condition which is cruise flying condition where lift is balanced balancing the weight of the aircraft and thrust is providing the forward speed no, overcoming the drag right so of course there are many parameters which are going to affect this no, balance of forces and also of moments so there is no unbalanced moment uh, acting here which will try to give aircraft also angular motions so here uh, we do uh, we are assuming that the moments are all balanced and forces also balanced so that uh, aircraft is in steady condition so of course uh, no this motion that we are talking about small part of motion or in general when the steady flight condition is going to depend upon various factors for example uh, whether the aircraft is flying at sea level conditions or or at some uh, altitude which is quite large will depend upon how atmosphere is uh, uh, surrounding atmosphere is so atmosphere uh, which changes with altitude affects the motion of so motion is small motion around equilibrium state or the large motion right from an equilibrium state okay a typical uh, 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 parameter which is the density the variation of density with altitude is quite significant
and if you look at the order of magnitude of magnitude of density at different no altitude levels at uh, sea level so I'm going to uh, very soon tell you where this density is appearing in these forces so let's look at how this density is changing with altitude so we know that uh, the value of density of air at sea level condition is 1.225 and let's look at how it changes over different altitudes at uh, 20 kilometers is roughly no 0 0.088 kg per meter cube and at 47 kilometers is uh, 0 0.00147 61 kilometers is 0 0.00025 and at 80 kilometers to 90 kilometers altitude is of the order of 10 days to minus 5. So with such a large variation in densities with respect to the altitude uh, what changes is the aerodynamic forces and also the moments okay. So these, this is one parameter which is going to affect the motions and uh, the motion of the aircraft through through aerodynamic forces and moments that are developed on the aircraft when it's uh, going through air. The other things that can affect the motion of aircraft are its own parameters. You know. For example, each of the components of aircraft. For example, the fuse large, no, which we design based on our mission requirements. So, if a four seater aircraft uh, will have some fuse large geometry, a large transport will have a longer geometry. Depending upon how the shape of the fuse large looks like, is going to contribute to the aerodynamics of aircraft. engine plans which is an integral part of aircraft how it interacts with air that is also going to play a major role in deciding the motion of the aircraft and there are several other surfaces which are control surfaces mounted on uh, airfoil uh, like shapes so you have wing tails which are horizontal tails and vertical tails so this is horizontal tail and this is vertical tail
and control surfaces these are aerodynamic control surfaces which manipulate air passing over an aircraft to change lift and moment control surfaces are uh, for example ailerons mounted on the outboard side of the wing it's a hinged surface which can be moved about the hinge line rotated about the hinge line so that it affects the <coughs> the flow field and thus results in change in aerodynamic forces and moments so ailerons is the control uh, surface mounted on the wing elevator is so all of these are small flaps you know, mounted on the major surfaces elevator is the small <coughs> flap attached to the trailing edge of the horizontal tail and rudder is mounted on the vertical tail so these are major components of aircraft and they contribute actually to the motion of aircraft in steady condition or perturbed conditions what we are going to do is we are going to first try to understand aircraft parameters and in order to do so let's first define an access system to the aircraft with the center with the at the center of gravity which is also the center of mass of the aircraft so x b y b z b is an orthogonal access system fixed to aircraft with origin at as center of mass which is also the center of gravity okay now because this uh, aircraft will assume the aircraft to be a rigid aircraft uh, it will have 6 degrees of of freedom in motion three degrees of freedom for translational 
motion and 3 for rotational motion. Now, these uh, these uh, translational motions uh, can be along the 3 axis of the aircraft. So, aircraft has velocities along its axis which are u, v and w. It can also have rotations about the axis. Rotation about the x axis is uh, called the roll motion. Positive roll motion would be like this, and the rate associated with this motion is called the roll rate. Similarly, we have uh, two other rotational motion, a pitch motion. is the motion which is about the y axis of this aircraft a positive pitching motion is when z b is moving towards x b and the variable associated with that is called pitch rate. So, aircraft is rotating about the y b axis in this x z plane and that is what is pitching motion. Yawing motion is the motion rotational motion about the Z B axis. So this uh, x axis is moving towards y uh, in x y plane uh, about this z axis. Uh, the positive yawing motion is when x is moving towards x b is moving towards the y b axis and that rotation is about z axis. So, this is yaw and the variable associated with this motion is r which is called yaw rate. So, aircraft has three uh, velocities u, v and w along its axis which describe the translational motion of aircraft and three rotational uh, motion uh, about the three axis x, b, y, b and z, b uh, given by these variables p, q and r which are roll rate, pitch rate and yaw rate. Now, this motion is being caused because of the forces and moments acting on the aircraft. So, let us look at uh, expressions for those forces and moments. So, x is the axial force, so it is sum of all the forces acting on the aircraft along its x axis, and that is called axial force which is equal to q into s to c x where q is the
dynamic pressure expression for which is half rho v squared where v is the absolute velocity also the relative wind speed s is the wing plan form area and cx is a non dimensional coefficient so in this case cx is axial force coefficient a force along the y axis is uh, so it's called side force which is equal to q into s into cy where C y is side force side force coefficient z is the force in the vertical direction along z b axis Cz is or we should say normal force so these are the three forces now acting along x y and z axis of the aircraft and there are three moments these moments are rolling moment the expression for which is so l is the rolling moment the so sum of all the moments you know, acting about the x axis of the aircraft is the rolling moment so everything else <coughs> you know cl is the rolling moment coefficient and b is the span of the wing expression for the pitching moment so pitching motion is motion about the y axis no? so <coughs> sum of all the moments which are uh, resulting in the pitching motion of the aircraft 
is given by this m which is equal to q into s to c m into c bar c m here is pitching moment coefficient and c bar is the mean aerodynamic chord of the wing. <coughs> Expression for yawing moment is given by n equal to q into s to c n into b where c n is is yawing moment coefficient. So, these forces are uh, the axial forces are, are actually the resultant forces uh, which are going to depend upon uh, forces due to you know, gravitation, the aerodynamic forces acting on the aircraft. So, this uh, force for example, the axial force is the sum of is aerodynamic component, thrust component and the gravitational component. This aerodynamic component the forces and moments are going to depend upon how the wind is oriented with respect to the aircraft. Orientation of wind relative wind coming onto the aircraft is described by two which are no, alpha which is angle of attack and beta which is the angle of Side slip. Let's let's look at what uh, these angles are in terms of the velocity components of aircraft along its axis. the relative wind you know, coming onto the aircraft or aircraft is going in the wind with this uh, velocity v and with this component u v and The aircraft velocity vector makes 
an angle beta versus projection on the xz plane. So xz plane is uh, also known as the longitudinal plane of the aircraft and aircraft is assumed to be symmetric about this plane. or we can say that the axis system is so defined that uh, this xz plane is the plane of symmetry of aircraft. So beta is the angle which uh, the plane uh, this shaded plane makes with the xz plane. So in terms of uh, beta and uh, the angle the angle of attack which is defined as this so in this xz plane the component of velocity vector is in this direction and that the angle that uh, that uh, projection of b onto xz plane makes with xb axis is the angle of attack alpha is the angle of attack uh, which is defined as the angle between the projection of velocity v onto the xz plane and the x axis of the aircraft. Side slip angle is defined as the angle between the the <coughs> plane the shaded plane shaded plane in this picture and the xz plane. So in terms of the velocities 
of these angles are given uh, as beta sin beta equal to V over capital V and tan alpha is W over U. Okay. So clearly, this uh, uh, this part of the axial force, uh, the aerodynamic part, depends upon. Uh, it's, it's coming from the from the lift and drag components. This clearly depends upon what these angles are how uh, wind is or aircraft is oriented with respect to the wind this uh, component is going to depend upon that is and it is also depends upon the Mach number. So if you also want to include the altitude in this uh, function then the force is aerodynamic force is actually depending upon the Reynolds number which includes the uh, velocity and the uh, density both. There are many popular uh, books on this uh, subject available now uh, but in this <coughs> course the books that I am going to uh, refer to. Are the following price stability and automatic control by Robert uh, C. Nelson published by <coughs> McGraw-Hills Dynamics of atmospheric flight by Bernard Etkin, published by Dover Publications. Mechanics of Flight by Warren F. Phillips published by John Wiley Publications.
airplane performance stability and control by CD Perkins and R E H the first edition of this book <coughs> appeared in 1949 and this is still one of the classic performance stability dynamics and control of airplanes by Bandhu and Pamadi. published by education series of books so <coughs> throughout this course uh, we will be in contents from one of these books uh, for different topics and many of the examples actually will come from this book by robert nelson Thank you.